Welcome to this on video. The idea of the Dutch reclaiming land is now a meme. A massive part of the land that makes up the Netherlands is below sea level, and it can be shown by this map. The reason why this is is because whenever the Dutch needed more land, instead of fighting their neighbors like some other countries, the Dutch just reclaim land from the sea. The reason why the Netherlands is above the water is because of smart engineering on their behalf spanning back centuries coming into today. In this video, I'll be discussing the flood management in the past and how the Dutch went from this to this, any heard lessons learned along the way, and how the Dutch keep their country dry today. How did the Dutch claim land or quite literally make the Netherlands because most of the Netherlands is under the sea? It's simple and just requires tons of dikes and other flood defenses and a lot of experience. The Dutch uses a technique called poldering and this is done by first building a wall around an area around a body of water and then the Dutch do is they drain out the water from inside the polder and there you have it, it's free real estate. I mean, if we don't count the cost that went into the dikes and the time and the energy that went into draining the land, which is a lot by the way, it is as close as we can get to free real estate. This is a lot better than what the neighbors of the Netherlands did when they needed more land, which is to take it by force. Okay, I will stop using Nazi Germany as a punching bag now. Back in the past, the job of draining the land was done by windmills, which are world renowned as a symbol of the Netherlands, but now the job is done by electric pumps. These polders were often small projects and were often funded privately. The Netherlands ended up having kilometer upon kilometer of dikes across the country to protect these polders, but you can begin to find a problem with this system. The problem was that there were so many of them and they were vulnerable to flooding. When they did fail, which did happen by the way, it resulted in the deaths of lots of people and massive amounts of farmland lost. This all reached a climax in 1916 between the 13th and 14th of January when a large storm triggered a massive storm surge, and the subsequent flooding resulted in the large segment on the coasts of the Zoyder Zee getting flooded. This was not good for the Netherlands, a country at the time that was growing and rapidly needed a lot of land, or agriculture. This time an engineer by the name of Dr. Cornelius Lely was put to the task of planning of the building of the wall on the Zoyder Zee by the Dutch government and fix this problem for once and for all. Now, the whole idea of building a wall to protect the Dutch against the North Sea was not a new idea, and many people came up with similar ideas, such as guy by the name of Henrik Steven also proposed to build a wall connecting the island and the Wadden Sea, protecting the land in the south. However, during that time in the 1600s, the technology to pull such a mega project off was not available. In the 1900s, they had massive advantage of steam engines and later to come electric pumps, which made the land reclamation so much easier. Cornelius went out to carry out his measurements and came up with this. He planned to build a massive dike along the Zwetter Zee, which would turn the inland bay into a freshwater lake, later called Isomere. Since the project was conducted in part during the Great Depression, this added a lot of jobs and at one point almost 5,000 people worked on the project. When done with the Offshore Dike, the name for this dam, resulted in the North Sea to be blocked off, then Lely's plan called for the start on a second project claim the land, which is within the now called Eichelmere. There were clear benefits of building the polders. First of all, there's more land for agriculture for the growing nation. Second, there'll be more land to build homes and apartments and everything that would be needed. And finally, having more land in general is just always useful. The Dutch were to use a poldering method to make the new polders. The first one was the one in the north. It was a small polder called Ringermere. The second was the NO polder and then the Flavoland polder, and then finally the Merkermeer polder. The land reclamation project in the Zoyder Zee was a massive job compared to simply draining a lake, like all the smaller private projects earlier. Funding for this came from the government and for the Dutch, the entire Zoyder Zee work project was their moon missions of the US and Soviet governments. Like all the moon missions, there was a lot to learn. To experiment the understanding of the land reclamation, a small test polder was created here to test out how to conduct this whole operation. When problems arise, they would find a solution that would help them with the construction of the next boulder. One key flaw that they found was with the NO polder, whereas the, since the land of the polder was below the old land, the groundwater in the older land would seep into the polder and be pumped out to sea. This would make the old lands above less fertile to agriculture and suffered a bit. This problem was corrected with the next polder, the Flavoland polder where they would keep a small distance with the land above with a small canal in between. 
The Flavor Land folder was built into two steps, at first the eastern section and then later the western section. When the government drains the land, the people can not just move onto the lands just quite yet. Because the ground is too unstable to build on, it's hard to grow food and it's salty because the Zwarter Zee was salt water. To make the land ready for agriculture and settlement with buildings and roads, the Dutch tried to do anything to increase the drainage of the soil. As that slowly over time gets rid of the salt, also try to increase the stability of the soil to allow heavy things such as buildings to be built there. This can be done by dropping reed seeds from plains to help strengthen the ground in the western part of the NO polar where seeds could not easily be sown. And also clover, favored for its deep roots and good drainage of the soil. Also a combination of other plants later on such as rye, wheat, Oats, barley, was also grown in parts of the folder that were arable for the first crop rotations. These crops helped the ground become stronger by having their roots strengthen the ground. Also another fun fact is to note that when the Dutch drain the land, it sinks because most of the land that is in the Netherlands was mostly peat and when peat is dehydrated it decomposes resulting the land sinking further below the sea level. In the end, the reeds are burned or taken out and they act as good fertilizer for the crops that are to be grown in the newly formed land and help it get ready for settlement. They also fitted millions of drainage pipes to help drain the land more quickly and thus making it more fertile. The network of pipe reaches 40,000 kilometers. Now when the land is clear it is perfect for building, however it's not perfect for the crops because of the salt. Also the government did not just want to give it to the farmers, as it would repeat the flaws of other land reclamation projects in Harlem Amir and Pulwana Polder. What happened was that the land was given to the farmers because of it being new land, and not properly prepared for farming it resulted in low crop yields and resulting in bankruptcies and increased poverty. So. They set up a board for the N.O. Polder. For the N.O. Polder, this was called the Board of Rangermeer, later changing its name to National Eiselmeer, Polder's agency or Reich, to do all the micromanaging and monitoring of the progress of the whole project in the area. They would farm the land for a given amount of years and then give it to the farmers to make sure that the land was fertile and productive. Over the years and the following decades, salt was drained out out the polder and making the land some of the best farmland in the country and is highly valued. Per hectare, the land in Flavoland and the polders is some of the most expensive in Europe, fetching sometimes over 120,000 euros per hectare. For comparison, the average price per acre in the Netherlands is around 68,000 euros per hectare which is also some of the highest farmland prices in all of Europe. While this can be attributed to the polder's high agricultural productivity, it also has a bit to do with agricultural land being a good investment because of no capital gains tax, but we can make a video on that if you're interested. That eastern part of the Netherlands was now protected by a massive dam with tons of newly made valuable farmland behind it. What about the western part of the Netherlands? particularly Zeeland and South Holland and the provinces surrounding the River Maas, Estuary and Delta. This became a massive problem for the Dutch government during the floods of 1953. The disaster was because of disrepair of dikes and levees and little investment put into repairs and the damage taken during World War II. Also many levees were too low and the floodwaters during 1953 were very high. A couple of days after the storm, the Delta Works was founded to find a solution to the flooding they could very easily do what they did in the Zwerder Zee, another enclosure dike. The problem comes when you turn a saltwater environment such as the North Sea and turn it into a freshwater environment. That is great for us humans, but not so great for the fish that were used to the saltwater environment. Also, the fishing industry suffered a lot in the Zwerder Zee after the dam was constructed. And finally, the river needs to get out and that will take a lot of pumping power to get the river mass over the dike such as the one in the Zwerder Zee. So this time, things would be different and the engineers came up with this. They would construct a massive surge barrier running along the delta of the river mass and wall. They would have a surge gates lowered in the case of a storm. Also another barrier, the Maislant barrier, the one that is at the port of Rotterdam, would just slide into position, fill up with water and then sink, keeping a large part of the, the city of Rotterdam and the port behind it safe. One side note is that this is not originally part of the Delta Works. All these large barriers reduces the height for barriers behind them, and reducing the length of the coastline hence reduces the points of failure, together with natural barriers like dunes on the coast, 
help keep the Randstad, the part of the Netherlands with the most people, dry. While these barriers and dam are cool, they're not the only reason why the Dutch are so good at managing water. Large part of it comes to the system they have that works on dikes. This starts with the oldest forms of government in the Netherlands, local water boards. If you're bored of me explaining, then I got enough watch time out of you and you can click away. And it's surprising you got this far. But before you leave, consider subscribing and the growing community we have on this channel. When in the past farmers were pouldering the land to farm, the dikes and dams and systems that manage water were getting increasingly more complex and justified the creation of local water boards that manage the water in a given area. These are things like building and maintaining flood defenses, the canals. Today there are 21 of these boards that exist. Over the years, this was more and more centralized for a more and more centralized approach. That is why during the French rule of the Netherlands from, from 1795 to 1814, they created the Ministry of Directorate General for Public Works and Water Management or now more known as the Reichswaterstaat. The water boards did not want to give up their power. They were old institutions and that's why the Reichswaterstaat works with the water boards and does the work with the government to maintain waterways and all the cool stuff built. This cooperation is great at preventing situations where one builds a lot of dikes and one does not and has worsened flooding. These are called levee wars and happen often in America. The current approach the Dutch have to water is to give it some space rather than fight against it. They give the river some space to expand during flooding and reduce the need for height of levees. If they need space for the river to overflow, an example of this is Indrug's Boulder Park in just North Rotterdam. This project by the government was called Room for the River and was created after the floods of 1995 because of the need for better flood protection along the rivers. This project was put to the test during the past and quite recently during the 2021 floods in Western Europe. The Netherlands has come out with zero deaths while their neighbors, Belgium taking 43 and Germany with 196. This is not to say there was no effect on the Netherlands and there was a bit of flooding there, but one can say that the Netherlands centuries of experience dealing with water did help them with saving lives. But these floods are also a reminder of the impending climate crisis. The Dutch are continuing to do what they can do, to work with and to control the water as much as they can. The Dutch government is trying to work on this before these issues become more serious such as raising levees, reinforcing them, or aiding the creation of salt marshes on the coast, giving more room for the river to expand during torrential rain. But over time, this is going to get difficult because of how flat and low the country is, and it is entirely likely that the Netherlands may go under the seas. Thanks for watching this on video. Thanks for all the comments on the last video on bike lanes, and if you had not noticed, I wanted to say that I'm currently doing a video series on the Netherlands and I have two more in the works and will come out in the subsequent months. And another thing I'd like to add is I recently got a new microphone so feedback on audio quality would be welcomed. So finally, thanks for watching and see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe and like.